Greetings, my friend. Welcome to the podcast show, Touching People for Heaven, with your host, Preacher John. God bless you, my dear friend. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there will be something here on this show and this episode that you're able to use in your life, in the life of your family, and in the life of your friends, and in the lives of people you haven't met yet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, now, you ready? (laughs) <laughs> Let's get started. This is episode number 46, number 46, and it's titled, The Word of God is Not Bound. It's based on uh, a few different scriptures, all found in 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 2 Timothy 2. Uh, I'll have three of them right here. I'll read three of them off, number 8, number 9, and number 10. So it's 2 Timothy 2, 8, 2, 9, 2, 10. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Amen. Greetings, my friend. Before we get started in our letter, this letter is based upon some things that was going on in my Grand Junction trip. I just got back from Grand Junction uh, last night. This is Saturday and uh, the day after uh, getting back from trip across the state. Grand Junction is the western end of the cross that lays over the state of Colorado. So I go to these ends, these gates to the state that I live in, Colorado, and I preach in those gates. Uh, Next time I go will will be the end of April. That's the fifth Friday. I go the fifth Friday at the end of the cross that's inside the state, or rather over the state. So the next fifth Friday will be Fort Collins, and the following after that will be Burlington, and the next after that will be Trinidad. Now, I've gone through all these cities already once before last year, and this year I'm starting off again as the Holy Ghost leads me. And I learned a couple things. I preached for two days, all day Wednesday and all day Thursday, and uh, some things came to me that I thought were quite interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's why the letter was was coming from that, but uh, it also comes from the previous letter. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to read this letter, and uh, that's what the script is for this show. So it's uh, easy. If you have the letter in front of you, you can probably go along with me. And if you don't, it'd be fine, too. Uh, I caution if you do are if you are trying to follow me as I go through the letter on the show, uh, I may, and I do, <laughs> not may, but I do, divert into some different directions. I do little sidebars here and there as the Spirit leads or as appropriate. And uh, are you ready? So let's get started. Greetings, my friend. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And only through you do we obtain salvation with eternal life. No other doctrine, Lord Jesus, will we receive. Holy Ghost, we need your edification to lead us away from the devourer and deceiver, the devil. We look to our only Savior to redeem us from this wicked time. We wait patiently upon you, Lord Jesus. Thank you in advance for coming for us. We love you, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. What is it in some prayers that move our spirits so greatly? Because I started writing this letter, and when I got to the prayer, I started crying and simply loving on my Jesus, my Savior, my Lord, and my God. Folks, there is nothing in this world that can compare to the glory we will see one day. Please, I beg you, my friends, do not continue conforming yourself to this world. This world is dying. It will be gone and replaced with a new earth. Will you truly, honestly, 
from your heart know that you'll be there? Well, once again, I sit down at my little desk and I begin writing this Sunday prayer letter. Then the Holy Ghost moves me to write a certain way. This is difficult to explain. However, Those who do write for the Lord Jesus, articles, discourses, books, even songs, you know what I'm referring to. It's amazing. And it's like like you're filled with inspiration. It's truly a miraculous uh, time. And that's why I do the sidebar here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this, you better not be reading that letter while I do this show. You're going to get all mixed up. <laughs> but uh, a little sidebar is is when the Spirit of God moves, it's like it, you're elevated, you're lifted up, and then you begin to preach or minister or write or write your song or write your text, write your book or whatever the Lord's having you do. You preach, you teach, and it's a I mean, it's it's a real thing that happens in your spirit, real thing. And that's, I guess if you've never, ever felt the anointing of God, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But for every single believer, I'm still on my sidebar, by the way, for every single believer, you have had that anointing at least once in your life. And that is when you were born again. And that is why when you accept Jesus Christ is your Savior, you have this amazing lightness. The heaviness seems to leave. The burden on your back seems to be lifted off. Your feet seem to rise above the earth. It seems like all of the troubles and cares of the world have disappeared. That's the anointing. And after the anointing, the devourer comes in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why that anointing never comes back. And that's why your prayer life is of critical importance. Now, that's a long sidebar, (laughs) even for me. But someone need to hear that. Maybe I needed to hear it. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, if there were a way to push every one of you who are reading this letter or listening to this show into writing for the Lord Jesus Christ, I would push with everything I have There is nothing greater in this life than to be a faithful servant of the Most High God. The fact that I'm called by God to serve in this ministry is the reason most people tell me that they can't do what I'm doing. What these people who make excuses are actually saying is, I love the world more than the Father. I know, sort of blunt, I know. And it's painful. Who do you truly serve, my friend? Will you serve the great and mighty king? Are you going to do more? Are you going to do for, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> As you, Another sidebar quickly. I don't edit these shows. What, what comes out of my mouth stays on the show, as you've heard on the last show. Let me say this little section one more time. Whom do you truly serve, my friend? Will you serve the great and mighty king? What are you going to do for our Lord and Savior? When will you turn from the world and serve the Lamb of God? Whew, I got through that one. <laughs> Praise but, You know, some of these letters, other sidebar, some of these letters are pretty heavy. And, you know, that's just the, you know, I've tried to be light and easygoing, but when I'm ministering, I'm heavy. And in the beginning, you know, decades ago when I started preaching, man, I was heavy and fire brimmed. I mean, I was hardcore preacher, sin, no sin, you know, get away from that. You know, you're going to hell. I mean, I was just on fire for God in in that kind of a way. And I've lightened up a lot when I'm talking to people. But when I'm ministering or when I'm writing uh, ministerial letters, I tend to be leaning towards a heavier letter. And so... If you don't like a heavy message, which is really meat, but a heavier message, you know, this ministry might kind of rub you wrong, but, uh, but maybe it'll rub you in such a way that uh, it'll smooth out the edges. I don't know. Maybe it'll get you fired up for God, get you out on the street with me. Let's get back to our letter. The Word of God is not bound. This is our title to today's Sunday prayer letter. There is much more 
here inside of this title than what will be talked about in this letter. We just have to wait and see what transpires. Amen? In our previous Sunday prayer letter, we had the title, Teach No Other Doctrine. And it is a good letter. If you haven't read it or listened to the podcast episode on that letter, it may be good for you. In this Sunday prayer letter, we'll be going over several topics covering about 10 scriptures from 2 Timothy 2, 7-16 through 16 in the King James Bible. In the beginning of this letter, I struggled briefly on trying to find just one scripture to use. All the while, I was being moved to use the entire passage of scripture. You know, the Holy Ghost knows the truth because He is the truth. Then once I started using the context that was showed to me, then it all began with the prayer we just prayed. And things start happening. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I think what we're going to do is key in on certain aspects of our scripture and highlight others that back up what it is we are writing and reading and listening on the show. Sound good? We can start off with the scripture just prior to our text. It's namely 2 Timothy 2.7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. By considering what is being said in the Holy Bible, and that is meditating on the truth, the Lord will give us understanding. This understanding comes by the Holy Ghost teaching us all the things the Lord Jesus taught. Jesus is the Word. That's a capital W. That's his title, the Word. That's per 1 John 5, 7 in the King James Bible. And on my letter here, I have a gentle note. This scripture, 1 John 5, 7, is not found in many other Bible versions. Beware of their text. They may have the opportunity to sway you and your family into another doctrine. But not today. But the seed is sown, will produce after its own kind. Be alert to the version of the Bible you use. Okay? Are you still with me? Okay, good. Let's go on. 2 Timothy 2.8 Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This raising from the dead, called resurrection, is what got Jesus to lose many of his disciples and followers. Did you know that? And now even here, Paul is in bonds, chains, and prisons, and many horrible things for teaching and preaching the word of the Lord Jesus. Sort of sounds like us today, because that is what us street preachers go through. Of course, you guys who always preach inside four walls may not get that sort of rebuke, or maybe you do. But I never did when I preached in four walls. I didn't get the rebuke. I got it after I got out of the four walls (laughs) and outside. (laughs) But for certain, us street ministers do. No question about it. I get it six days a week. I can relate to some of what the Apostle Paul went through, but only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, okay? You know what Paul went through. When did Jesus get into hot water? With his teaching on this subject of resurrection. Do you know? Do you know where it is? That's right. It's in John 66, 666. Wow, it's hard to say that. It's in the King James Bible. Take a note, the chapter number And the scripture number, it's 666. Hmm. Something to think about. So you go to read that. You You should get that in your Bible. You should go to John, the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 6, verse 66. And just think about that. It's pretty interesting. It really, really is. It gets you kind of wondering what's going on there. So we'll continue on here. It's 2 Timothy 2, 9. Wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. Is that what it says? For some reason, I just love that statement. The word of God is not bound. Isn't that amazing? This means that no matter what happens on earth with anything at all, the word of God 
is not bound. Bound, B-O-U-N-D, bound, is defined as in this first mention in the King James Bible. Here it is. It's in Genesis 22, 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Isaac is the promised child, sort of like Jesus. Look at the scripture. This is the first mention of Isaac, Genesis 17, 19. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Doesn't that sound familiar? Jesus Christ was our sacrifice. He was bound upon the cross. John 1, 29, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him. That was John the Baptist. The next day John, John the Baptist, seeing Jesus coming unto him, saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The Word of God is so, so totally awesome. Why isn't it read and heard and prayed and kept and written every day in our lives? The cares of this world, that's the answer. Oh, well. We go on. 2 Timothy 2.10 Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I wrote a note in my Bible when I was reading this text this morning. I wrote, this is me writing, okay? I wrote, if a man is not in Christ, then there is no eternal glory for him. Here's a sidebar. Let's go back up to the text, 2 Timothy 2.10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Which is in Christ Jesus. The salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And that's why I wrote, if a man, male or female, is not in Christ, then there is no eternal glory For that person, that man, that woman, that male, that female, that man, there is no eternal glory if you're not in Christ. And that that, that can preach, can't it? 2 Timothy 2.10, that is a preaching message right there. Do you see it? (laughs) Praise God. As a believer, we are in Christ Jesus. Can a believer leave Christ Jesus and therefore leave eternal glory? Why would anyone leave Christ Jesus? Can you find scriptures for this? Does the world have that much of a pull on believers to the point that they would leave their Savior, Jesus Christ, for the world and all it has to offer? Man, these are serious questions to ask. If we are living in sin, then what? Be holy, my dear friends. Be holy. Be holy. As Jesus said, go and sin no more. 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. These three scriptures here in 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 13, these three scriptures that tend to, be over, tend to be overlooked at times because they are sort of, you know, poetic. And since they sound poetic, and in some Bibles they actually write it in a poem-type form format, I checked on it, they really do. They actually make it look like a poem. <laughs> and so therefore, people don't take it serious. They just breeze right over it. They're, they are important, though, and should be taken with great understanding. Have ears to hear and a heart to understand is in order here. Number one, be dead with Jesus is to be born again. Number two, 
To suffer is to take up your cross and follow Jesus. Number three, to deny Jesus is to go back and walk no more with Jesus. Number four, to believe not is to not accept Christ Jesus as Savior. As you can clearly see in this passage, we can spend an entire letter on just three of these Holy Scriptures, on just these three Holy Scriptures. <laughs> can, you, can you see that? The remaining Scriptures in our context, uh, which is in, we're in 2 Timothy 2, uh, the remaining context would be 14, 15, and 16, could be a little overwhelming coming from what was already been written here in this Sunday prayer letter. So why not stop here, or maybe after reading the, the rest of this letter or listening to this show, go look up this entire passage. Then slowly and deliberately read, or dare I say, study and search, how these holy scriptures apply to your own life. And I'll say again, they're in 2 Timothy 2, uh, 7 through 16. We can take a quick look at a couple of words that some use out of out of context, uh, contextual manner. Uh, that's kind of confusing. I'll have to rewrite that. Sorry. <laughs> These uh, the, so the two words are profane and vain babblings. From here we can go in many different directions, but let's not. Let's simply say that when we speak by the Holy Ghost, this is not what they say it is, because over the years I've heard it said that praying in tongues is vain babblings, which is or could be blasphemy. This is an extremely strong word to use, even in the Holy Bible. The first time that God used it is in Leviticus 24.11 in the King James Bible. The context or definition is to curse the name of the Lord. That's what blasphemy means. Blasphemy, blasph to blaspheme is to curse the name of the Lord. Man, that is a tough one for many. Again, beware, my friend. 1 Peter 5.8, listen to this. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Wow, <laughs> I have to almost take a break after things, saying that. So going back to our title on this Sunday prayer letter, the Word of God is not bound, nor is it in prison, nor is it locked away, the most cer and most certainly is alive and is for you, my friend. When you too have the Word of God, you too are not bound. You're not in chains. You're not subject to hell and the great white throne. What does Revelations 20, 11, and 12 say? And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, and whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Revelations 20 and 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged, out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Are you saved? If you're not sure of your eternal destiny, not convinced that you are saved, then right now, give Jesus a call. His number is Romans 10.13. Yeah, just give him a call. His number is right there. Right there. It's Romans 10.13. All right? Uh, let me tell you what it is. Romans 10.13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I call upon you now. Save me, Lord. Save me. Yeah, there you go. Just cry out to the Lord. Give Jesus a call. I just said, Jesus, if you're real, here I am. That was the call of my heart. And Jesus came and saved me. This prayer I have in my letter here, I wrote a simple sample, and I'll read it again. I'll say it again. Lord Jesus, I call upon you now. Save me, Lord. Save me. My friend, that's how simple it is. 
That's how easy God made it for you to receive eternal life. It's, that's just a cry from your heart, man. You don't have to lay down those drugs. You don't have to lay down that pornography. You don't have to lay down anything. You just have to give Jesus a call. You have to be so fed up with your life, so tired of it, and just cry out to the Lord with a sincere and true cry from your heart like a child cries for their mother or their dad when they're hurt. And you cry, and that dad or that mom comes running. And Jesus will come for you, my friend. He will come for you the moment you cry to him. Lord Jesus, I call upon you now. Save me, Lord. Save me. In John 20, 31, But these are written, just like I wrote, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. Amen. I mean, isn't that wonderful? Welcome to the family of God, my friend. You are loved by God Almighty. You will spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have eternal life. You are saved. Amen and amen. Praise God for that. Okay, that's it for this letter. I pray it was enough to get you started or even going further into the Word of God because as you know, the Word of God is not bound. My Sunday prayer letter is signed with the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, J.C. And there's four scriptures at the bottom of my letter. Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Psalm 84, 11, for the God, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Proverbs 22, 11, He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. In Revelation 22, 21, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen and amen. So this is my Sunday prayer letter. It's written Saturday, January 30th, 2021 at 5.38 p.m. in Boulder, Colorado. It's written by John Shuck, street preacher, church builder, founding pastor, and missionary. If you're ever in Boulder, give us a call. Give us a look. Just find us somewhere. You can even find us on the web. You can find us anywhere because we are all over the place. Preaching Jesus Christ is the way to eternal life. God bless you, my friend. Take care, and we'll talk to you again. All right? Bye-bye.